Would you believe me if I said we we're in the midst of a revolution? That we were once considered one of the greatest brewing nations on this planet? No? Because we were. Traditional British cask ale was the magnum opus of the industry and was revered the world over. Those were the good days. Because here in Blighty we were falling out of love with ale. As mass-produced keg beer started to rise in popularity, demand for cask dramatically declined. By the time the 1970s came, British real ale was on a one-way course to oblivion. But that was then. As I said, there's a revolution afoot. British real ale has never been so popular. It's hip, cool, and now beloved by men and women of all ages. Now this change isn't a result of TV or the internet. It came from the breweries to the cellars and the pubs, from our kitchens to our fridges. The art of making beer is no longer for the privileged few. The selection available has moved past the usual offer license offenders to bring amazing quality and flavors usually reserved for the wine trade. Is this a short lived second coming or merely the start of a new beer-centric status quo. The dictionary defines craft beer simply as a beer produced in a traditional, non-mechanised manner by a small brewery or microbrewery. And to leave it at that, we'll be doing craft beer a massive disservice. To me, craft beer is about amazing unique flavours and experimenting with tried and true classics. To find an example of a brewery that embodies these qualities, I haven't got to look far. As of 2014, there are more than 1,000 microbreweries in the UK, with London contributing the substantial bulk of those. Organisation Camera says that this is the highest number of operating breweries in over 70 years, which means that there is a brewery for every 50 pubs. One such brewery is nestled in the heart of one of the capital's most culturally progressive regions, East London. The East London Brewing Company a relatively new brewery in the microbrewery scene. What makes them stand head to head with the innovators of this movement? And with such an oversubscribed field, what do they think they can bring to the table? I'm Claire. I'm Stuart. Um, and we set up the East London Brewing Company back in 2011. So, um, Stuart has always been a keen home brewer and obviously comes from a chemical, industrial chemical background. My background is very different in, in much more communications and marketing and both of us having worked for other people for a long time decided that we really wanted to work for ourselves so it was more a question of thinking about something that we could do that would be fun, um, that we could do together where we could combine our, our skills and we settled on a, a microbrewery and it seemed a bit crazy at first. At that stage we were right at the beginning of London's brewing boom so there weren't that many small breweries around. I think about 20 in the whole of London, including the, the big breweries when we started. Um, and certainly in East London, there weren't any that we knew of, although in retrospect now there were a lot. We started with a blank spreadsheet and a lot of questions, and we visited a lot of other microbreweries around the UK, and we did all the necessary um, work that we had to do on this unit once we found it, putting in the floors and electrics and those kind of things and registering the business. And then we finally brewed our first beer in August of 2011. Water, hops, malted barley and yeast. 
It's funny to think that so much can come from this random assortment of ingredients. Each week, we're going to look at one of these in a more in-depth nature. Starting with hops. Hops have been used for medical and food flavoring purposes since the Roman times, but nowadays it's vital in the beer making process for those very reasons. Before the 13th century, beer was flavoured with plants such as wild rosemary and yarrow. Even ingredients like ginger and aniseed were thrown in for flavouring purposes. Hops contain several characteristics that brewers desire in their beer. They contribute a bitterness, provide floral, citrus and herbal aromas and flavours. Furthermore, they help to balance out the sweetness of the malts. A nice example of hoppy beers are the surplus of various pale ales that are rife in the beer market. Such as the East London Pale Ale and their new Cowcatcher, American style pale ale. For a more in-depth look at some amazing hoppy beers, make sure you check out our Beeried companion show, Beeried Brews, where I'll be talking about some of my favorites There's a link in the description below, but make sure you wait to the end of the episode before clicking it. Ranging from uh, relatively low ABV miles called orchid, all the way up through various different strengths and colours, right up to the uh, meal stout, which is 5.8%. So the pale was the first, uh, the pale and the foundation were the first two ales we brewed at the brewery, and they, they were closely followed by Mad Watchman, and then the Quadrant, and then the Jamboree, and then the Orchid, and then Cowcatcher is our. Um, newest beer and we've had that for about a year and it's American pale ale. Cowcatcher, as you can see from the, the, the grid on the, on the uh, label, Cowcatcher is the grid in front of the old American steam trains that you know the, the great big things when they moved across the, across the tracks and just bashed the cows. So that, that's our latest beer. My favourite beer is Night Watchman which is our darker premium ale. It's a, it's a nice malty ale. Is my favourite. I know that uh, our best selling beers by a long way are the, are the paler, paler beers. Our pale ale, first and foremost, and Calcatch has also done very well. I'm not a favourite, um, it just depends on which, which mood I'm in, which, which particular beer. I mean, I think at least, if I had a least favourite, I could probably name it, but I'm not going to. It's about small, it's about craft, it's about local. I think it, it, it's of interest to people who, who live in London to drink beer that's made in London rather than imported from, from somewhere else. I think it speaks to the great British brewing tradition um, that we're really proud to be part of. You know, with respect to our beers, we brew beers that we like. Um, but I, I, at the moment it's all exciting, everything is for taking, there are so many different directions we can go into. But at the moment the bulk of our business is cask, our bottling business is still quite young. We have potential kegging ahead of us, we have potential export ahead of us. There are so many different things that, that we can do. They're opening a, a, a new station, you may have seen at the bottom of the road at some point this year. That gives people much better access to our brewery. Tap. We're launching our online shop. The, 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 the possibilities are endless. Well, it must be difficult if you've got so many layers of people between whoever's bringing you beer and the people at the top to, to maintain like, sort of personal touch. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, you know, obviously for ourselves, we want to be, we're never going to be rich in this, but we want to be comfortable and have a business that. Well, I guess that's all we've got time for this week, guys. As I said earlier in the video, 
make sure you check out our companion show, Beard Brews, where this week I'll be talking about my favourite hoppy beers. If you want to stay atop of all things Beard, make sure you subscribe to the channel below, give us a thumbs up, follow us on Twitter, at The Box Set Boys, and also check out our blog, The Box Set Blog, dot blogspot.com. Thank you.